mind. Hi, and welcome to the Dawn Java Show, the podcast where I talk to leaders, professionals, and entrepreneurs about who they are, what they do, and why they do it. And these leaders are part of my diverse nurse network, and this is brought to you by DawnJarvis.com. Today, I my guest is Tess Cope, and we are discussing harnessing vitality in the system. Tess has over 25 years, including board level in organizational development. She transitioned from a corporate to establish the Transformation Agency in 2010, which specializes in looking after looking at organizations as a whole system. Through robust diagnostics, executive coaching and team facilitation, she invites leaders to zoom back and sense check the level of healthy vitality and energy in their organization. Hello, Tess. How are you? Good to I'm see you. Good, good to see you too, and thank you for having me. I'm really well, thank you. That's really good. So I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Tess and I met at, um, at one of the first in-person events that happened um, following the lockdown, and um, I met her there, and we connected on LinkedIn and Facebook and everything, so I've been keeping an eye on her career. She's written a book. So... Um, and we're going to talk about that book today as well. So I'm, what I'm really interested in, Tess, is how did you get to where you are today? Particularly, I guess, um, like me, you transitioned from corporate to having your own business. Yeah. So um, a little tiny bit on my career. I worked in the business the mm-hmm. first time of my career. And by that, I mean in sales and marketing in operations and I got enticed over and and it wasn't planned in advance I got enticed over to the HR team Mm -hmm. in the organization that I was part of at the time and then there was such a spark arrived to fire that I hadn't even realized how joyful this particular kind of work is really helping people setting them up for success and so the second half of my career was in HR and I think once I realized that fire was there, pretty early into that process, I decided that I was going to be uh, an independent external. But I mapped out the journey of feeling when I would be ready to what I call cut the umbilical cord. So I, I decided back in 1999, believe it or not, that I would go independent. And then I gathered various trainings and experience and network, which I know you're supreme yeah. at built up my network and my platform so that in 2010 um, I felt I was ready and I'd got what I needed behind me so to speak and yeah and I have to be honest I only had this conversation with someone yesterday no regrets um absolutely love the the independent nature of being able to harvest from different industries and different sectors and different conversations and really help a wide range of people so yeah that's a little bit of Hi, I've got to where I am. Brilliant. And tell us a bit about the business. Yeah, so so as as I'm sure most people do, I really thought quite hard about the name of the business, first mm-hmm. of all, mm-hmm. and that leads into to, to what the business is about. So the transformation agency. I love it. Love transformation it. Love it. Is, is very much like finding a new DNA, a new way of being, a new way of operating, which infers and rightly so there's actually quite a lot of what i've called deeper reflective work needed rather than a move from a to b in a straight line we really go deep and get to the root cause of what's needed for transformation mm-hmm. um, and that includes um quite a bit of my time is doing executive coaching for me personally that's mainly the senior leaders i do a lot of work and since lockdowns opened up a particularly heavy amount of leadership team facilitation Mm -hmm. because I think a lot of organizations are realizing we need to get the the vibe the energy and the clarity back Mm -hmm. because people have been dispersed for such a long time and if it's not happening at the leadership team it's probably not happening in the rest of the organization Um, and then to, to wrap up that part uh, to support those leaders to think about what kind of health have we got. I've got a range of diagnostics that really kind of create a robustness to that looking mm-hmm. um, to figure out what's happening. So that's what's sitting under that part of transformation. 
Um, the word agency is also very deliberately chosen. I love collaborating with other people. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's just part of where I get my energy. Um, and so with certain clients and certain pieces of work, I'll bring other experts in alongside me mm -hmm. so that the complement of what we bring is actually more powerful than uh, myself and my own, for example. So mm -hmm. that's hopefully giving you a flavor of what we do, but also my thinking in like, what is it that I'd really like to offer? That's amazing. That's, am that's amazing. And um, you talk about with, um, with leaders about zooming back um, and looking at the organisational as, as a whole. And I, I'm really thinking about what you, you were saying earlier about, you know, we've been dispersed for a while and now we're coming back. So the nature of organisations have, have changed in the way of doing things, the culture, isn't it, in the in the organisation has changed. So, so how important is it to look back and sort of zoom and, and look at the organisation as a whole? Um, my experience of previously being an HR director, which is where I was when I springboard, mm. you know, took my final springboard out of the organization. My experience of both being internal and my clearly external um, is it's it's more than important, actually, it's quite critical. Mm -hmm. um, because you know, we all operate with whatever internal narrative that we have. Mm -hmm. And when most employees have been working at home, and home means very different things for very different people, as we know. For some people, that's working in their bedroom. For some people, it's sharing a bed set. For some people, it's trying to homeschool and balance mm -hmm. doing work at yes, the same time. Is, yeah. And so the internal narrative is, is really different across the, the workforce. Mm -hmm. um, and in most cases, um, and understandably so, I think the, the the company narrative and the reason for being and the reason for, you know, the, the performance drive, that's maybe not the front of the queue <laughs> anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it's partly about making sure that, A, is that the same? Because for a lot of organizations, they have actually nuanced what they're about as part of the process. Um, and it's about making sure that that clarity is universally understood because we all make things up when there are gaps, don't we? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. there's a real opportunity to physically bring people together mm -hmm. um, and emotionally bring people together with a, with a narrative that people can get excited about. And that's, I think that's the, the other thing. It's, um, I don't know if you've experienced this. I certainly have as an individual. The last two years have really... Uh, enabled and in a good way forced me to double click into my core values and what's important and and there's been some shifts I think for most of us in that yeah so reminding all of us what do we want to get excited about what are we willing to give our energy to I think deserves some attention inside the organization and that's certainly what I'm experiencing working with clients that's amazing. Yeah, really, really, some really good points there. I think, first of all, that sort of home means different things to different people. What is home? I know in my business, I had to, you know, really think about the space that I actually work and separate that out from my home life. Yeah. And, um, and also the, um, the importance of getting people together and having a narrative. And I've noticed, you know, I met you at an, an in-person event, which was great. And, um, and I've done a couple of in-person events over the last couple of weeks or so and the energy is totally different but however that as you said the last two years have talked to, to to communicate in a different way which is a skill and totally different to doing it in person and sort of like going to work every day um but it's sort of like you know how do you transfer and you've i i found that you've i've had to develop a way of doing that creating the same engagement the same excitement but what i really like what you said was about um it's forced us to look at our values and what we spend time on because when you when you are working online a lot you there's a choice about that there's a choice about whether you engage or not or how much you engage whether you turn your camera on or or don't or listen or you know how do you take that the the, the millions of bits of content whether that's from work or otherwise yeah. that come towards us every day so there is a choice and it's about how do you get people excited and about how people how do you get people engaged about how they do that and do that with you as a leader or a business or whatever and yeah. doing it so I love that Tess that's really really good
And so you talk about the impact that the leaders have on that. So we touched on that a little bit there, didn't we? Yeah. And it's sort of like, you know, what's the role as a leader in an organisation, leader of your business, leader of your family even, to think about, you know, the energy and vitality and what you're bringing to the organisation? Yeah, and I've already mentioned probably it's around about 60% of my time is working with leaders one-on-one. And I have to say, I get immense fulfillment from that work where you really get to see somebody, you know, really embrace their development and think quite deeply around what impact they have. Okay. And, you know, we know from research that's been done over the years, and clearly that will, I, I guess, be updated post-COVID. Yeah. But certainly the research that's been done previously tells us that leaders can have up to a 30% impact on the bottom line yeah. because of the climate that they create mm-hmm. and whether people choose to go the extra mile or the extra kilometre as, you know, as a sense of loyalty to that leader and their colleagues in the system. So, so we know fundamentally leaders have a really, um, you know, a significant impact on people, the climate, the culture, and therefore also performance. Um, from, from my point of view, and, and as you know, I, um, I, I very much bring that systemic lens, which is about thinking about the organization as a living system, as an entity, mm-hmm. not just the individuals within it. I think about it as an org- organism almost. And the paradigm shift that I invite leaders to do is rather than think, what is it we need from the system? What is it we need people to do? Um, and that, that has some validity in it. The paradigm shift I invite leaders to take is actually start with what is the system within which all of the people say need from me? Mm-hmm. So more of a, you might call it a servant leadership. What does the system yeah. need in order to shift, in order to move, in order to thrive? with a certainty that if you can get that health, that vitality, that engagement, performance will follow. So for some leaders, that literally is a 180 degree shift from where they might be naturally. And um, yeah, and I've seen, you know, significant step changes in leadership style that comes from the change in the thought process, which is, which is, you know, a, a gift to witness, I have to be honest. That's amazing, isn't it? Because because it's you know as you say, research does talk about you know has evidence the impact of leadership and what that can do. As you said on the bottom line, actually you know cash money you can measure it, and um it, and sort of like using that research, I suppose to um the, to talk about the benefits to the leader both for personally and professionally, isn't it? So they can, because yeah. you know, I think sort of like working with you and working with people like you, there's a benefit, isn't it? Both in looking at the business in a different way, system, systemically, as you say, and um, and and sort of like seeing in real time what impact um, they can have, which I think would be personally, so you talk about a 180 degree shift and uh, that's interesting to me because the culture um where i used to work in the nhs is very top down command and control you know and and they they know that they know the research and and they you know embrace the research but maybe it's about the implementation and that and i think that's what coaching does doesn't it so that helps you with actually so you can recognize something um intellectually but actually implementing it and making it personal and making it part of your value sets a different thing do you think so Absolutely agree with that. And and what can help, um, because when you're part of a large system, and some of my clients are, uh, you know, have employees of 100,000 plus, Mm -hmm. other other clients where they've got 60 employees, Mm this kind of range. Mm -hmm. Um, But when you are part of a really large system, it's not unusual to slip into the, well, you know, what what difference can I make in this huge system? Mm-hmm. Rather go with the flow of what are norms than try and push against it. And I think actually, if we can get um, help uh, leaders think, about, well, what's in my circle of influence? Mm-hmm. You know, whether that's my team, whether that's my directorate or my function or my division, depending on obviously the architecture of the business because you can create a little microcosm 
um, and you know start to and people start to notice that if a part of the system has a different level of vitality mm -hmm. so you can almost create an interest in an intrigue by really looking after that in the hope that that will start spilling out into other elements and, and dimensions of the system. Um, that said, uh, I, I think there is a reality and one of the phrases that we use from a systemic point of view is as above, so below. So whatever mm -hmm. dynamics are happening at the top will be filtering their way through. So mm -hmm. number one, let's be cognizant of that. Let's not try and ignore that reality. Mm -hmm. But then with that reality, what are the little things that you can do within your area that might just start to create some vitality for the people that you can directly impact? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I always invite people don't give don't give up, <laughs> even yes. if you are in one of those enormous yes. organisations that, for example, is command and control, or you know some of the some of the diagnostics that um, you know will show up in some of the work that I do is where there's, for example, really strong silos. Yeah, so it's like you know you're it, this is your box and don't come out of it. Yeah. That's of course not not said. It's never explicit. No, that's the experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you know those are the realities that people are working in. So we, we first of all need to acknowledge that. I think. Yeah, it's, I think it's not happening. I think that's really important. Is you know the unsaid things and what you know what's the experience I really like. Um, what you said about that and sort of like following on from yourself it's like really important for organizations to build um capability and um, to say, sustain the organization and also to help with change and you help with that as well don't you Kat Tess? Well I have to say and um I, I know we we spoke about this a little bit uh, when we've caught up previously mm -hmm. one of the things that I'm really passionate about is building that capability inside the system I think mm -hmm. there's always going to be a place for those of us that have chosen to move external and independent and there's a mm -hmm. value that that external and mm -hmm. independent perspective can bring However, in, in my view and in my experience of being internal, you know, that, that spike or that catalyst of activity mm -hmm. needs someone and, and, and others, more than, more than one, to hold it yes. and to keep the momentum inside yes. the system. Otherwise, it becomes a great day or a great event or a great moment, yes. and yes. then it fades away. And then the whole value of what got initiated and shifted actually gets diluted. So, you know, this is for me, I spend a lot of time talking to leaders as part of my coaching to help equip them around this. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's the why of my book. My book is all about building this approach in a one-on-one -on -one setting inside the system. So yeah, I really care about this. Yeah, really, really important to be to build both cap capacity and capability uh, around leadership and culture and the impact it has on the organisation. And um, you nicely segued into your book. So tell us about your book, as though you've just it's just been published. Does it was it published this year? It was published at the end, just literally before Christmas last year. So I, I'm still, uh, I'm still kind of. Oh, I have got a book. I have written a book, yeah. as opposed to at some point I will write a book, which you yeah. know had been playing for a, a couple of years at least. Um, so yeah, so my my book is called Harness. I do have a copy here, and I'm delighted to see that there's one behind oh, you yeah. as well. I don't know. One behind me. For those of you that do pick it up on screen, Harness. The subtext underneath that, which may not be visible on screen, a systemic approach guaranteed to revolutionize your coaching Fantastic. Um, and so so the intention behind the book as I mentioned is about building that capability to bring a systemic approach to your coaching to your leadership inside the organization and harness is a framework so um, H is the first step which is about honouring history, because if mm -hmm. we don't honour everything that went before in the system, we're naturally and automatically, unconsciously creating resistance to whatever it is we're trying to adjust, amend, move towards. Mm -hmm. A, it's acknowledging reality, the point that I just made. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't go through it all, but just to give a flavour, the R is about releasing the limiting patterns that are running. Mm 
-hmm. and those could be at every level. So harness is actually the, the coaching framework. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, the why is about building it inside. And um, I've been thinking about writing it, uh, not the whole time of being independent, because frankly, I wasn't ready and I hadn't built up enough collateral to feel mm -hmm. like I've got the content that I wanted to put out into the world. Um, but but certainly for the last couple of years, I've been thinking about it. And then COVID happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm, a, I'm a natural go towards things rather than a move away thing. So I mm -hmm. think, well, so what can I do now that I've got all this space, given mm -hmm. the people that I would normally be seeing face to face, frankly, are really thinking about different things like how do they keep their business running? Mm -hmm. How do they get people to work from home? Yeah. How do they got all of the facilities and you know all of the things just from the very fundamental survival pieces that clearly was number one thinking about the development and the leadership wasn't at the top of their agenda so i had space um and so i signed up with a book coach um uh, for a 12-week program and um, basically the so that it, first part of that was about scoping out well, what is it what does it look like you know what are all the kind of pieces that you want to put together um, I did quite a bit of research speaking to people if I did do this book what would be important for you what kind mm -hmm. of format do you like or not like so I got quite a, a rich download from who I would see as my my, my some of my typical readers and then my book coach basically held my feet to the fire every week for 12 <laughs> weeks. So every Friday morning, 10 o'clock, I needed to have a chapter. Um, well, I needed to have sent her a chapter the night before so that by 10 o'clock on the Friday morning, we're talking through the chapter that was written. That's amazing. Uh, and so uh, at the end of the 12 weeks, I'd got my first draft and then it went through the, the normal kind of editing and checking and visuals and, you know, the, all the publishing parts of how to put a book together, which are not my expertise, which is why I got help. Um, so yeah, it still feels a little bit surreal, I have to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but if I may say, I feel I feel chuffed with myself. I've got it over the line. That's fantastic. Um, a real um, thing around accountability, how a coach can help you actually yeah. um, go from your intention, your goal to actually um, having it delivered and, you know, out in, in stores and, you know, on, and to be, be able to buy and also a good experience in sort of like looking. So what do people actually want from from the from the book? You know, and I, I like that you did some research about if you read, wrote this book, what would you be looking for? Because I think um, sometimes in business, um, that's one of my reflections is that we can design these businesses, but who, who's going to buy the services, you know, or yeah. the product, you know, and do they want it? And that's something that I've been thinking about quite a lot in some of, of my of my development. And um, what's, the re what's the response been? You know, how's it been for you having written it and sort of like putting your intellectual property out there in a system for it? Um, a couple, well, a couple of things come to mind. I think it's still relatively early into the process. Like, yeah. It's still settling in me. That I said, oh, thank goodness, I have good work, you know, it's like there. And I have no idea what it's doing in terms of sales. It's just where we are in the process. I don't get that information from the publisher yet. Um, that said, for me, it was never really about how many copies it sells. It's like for those that pick it up, I really wanted to add value. And that's yeah. really core cool to, you know, to, to me and my value set. Um, so on that, I have had some really lovely feedback where people yeah. find it really helpful. You know, they take it into their coaching conversations with them. It feels like a good reference guide. Um, and, and, you know, bearing in mind, I mentioned earlier, it's a step-by-step -step with loads of examples to bring it to life. Um, you know, I have had some people come towards me and said, uh, because one of the things from a systemic point of view that the, the, the book really brings to life through the case studies is often in leadership, we are playing through our family system dynamics yeah. in our leadership. <laughs> too right, yeah. <laughs> so the two, two have become meshed. Yes. And one of the things that I talk about in the book is if you're working with someone and you help them understand that that might be some of what's going on, it's having them to separate those things mm -hmm. so that there's an appropriate place and time to work on their personal 
system and there's a place and time and a readiness to work on the organizational dimension and so the book talks about those often and in my experience working with leaders I would say at least 60% of the time, there is some kind of meshing going on. Sometimes that serves them. So just to be clear, that's not necessarily always a thing to, to pull apart because it could mm -hmm. be enabling them to show up the way they mm -hmm. show up. Mm -hmm. It's when it's a limiting pattern that's not having a positive impact where you really wanna, I would call, I would say unpack that and separate it. So, so yeah, I've had really lovely feedback and a, and a few leaders have come towards me. I'm having a conversation with one as a case in point. So I actually am now realizing my family patterns are coming through and I need help. Oh, um, wow. So yeah. it, it's creating a, a really lovely level of more openness. Yeah. That, ah, I haven't realized that and that I can now sense what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been lovely as well, you know, and for the people that are listening that are fellow business owners, coaches, consultants and, 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 and beyond, there is something there about, and it took me a while to be brave enough to put my approach out in the world. Mm -hmm. um, but there is something about when you put it out there, people are clearer on what to come towards you for. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually, is that it sort of like sets your stall out what you what you represent and also what you can offer to yeah. help as well. So it's like a shop window, isn't it, on on yourself and, and, yeah. and your business. I really like that. And for you personally, how's it been? Um Yeah, I think I, I think I said a moment ago I'm dare I say it, I'm quite proud of myself for yeah definitely it? <laughs> yeah of course absolutely Sometimes we're afraid to say that though aren't we oh like you that? should be you should be shouting so, it out loud so it's, a, it's a pride with a small p it's like a warm glow and kind of, do you know what i've done that yeah and, and it feels a little bit like a legacy that sort of sensation yeah so, oh, i'm really really proud of myself and and i can share with you which we haven't spoken about i've just signed back up with my group coach yesterday so number two's um, been um, been been percolating for yeah. a couple of months, and I have committed myself. So I'm going to have my feet back to the fire shortly. <laughs> cool, I love that. That's amazing because it's sort of like it's sort of um, you know I I've just written a book and and then it, it, you know that I've been thinking about it's never finished, isn't there? But is what you need to say another book or is it an updating the book that you've already done? Yes. So it's you know you can do both things, like can't you? You can update what you've already done and um you can it, you can write another book and it's all very um well I found it it's very inspiring. I love writing and you know it's very inspiring to be able to put that in um to put to put that out there your thoughts yeah. your story and, and everything like that as well so you know well done you that's that's that is amazing yeah. now tess you're a busy lady i've seen you on social media you're you've written a book you write another one my goodness you run your you run your business um you know how do you stay i ask this of all of my um all of my guests how do you stay focused positive and productive because you certainly are um so a couple of things um i'll do i'll do a couple of small things first small things but but profoundly important uh -huh. so one is my workspace uh -huh. um and of course you can't see all of my workspace here yeah but in front of me i've got a picture of my mom and dad who are both past oh. to the right of me i have a picture of me, me and my husband who I'm very happy to say is still by my side. Yes. To my left, I have a picture of my birth family, my yeah. um, family. And behind me, I've got a, a single candle burning. Mm -hmm. And so every day when I come to my desk, I light a candle in each of those spaces. And it's like a 30 second. I love having you behind me. Please be beside me. I have two candles on my desk. Help me bring my light to the world. Uh -huh. And then the candle at my back is and keep me grounded in the process. That That's takes amazing. 90 seconds. Yeah. And that allows me to keep my feet on the floor and just be with me and have my resources, emotional resources kind of made explicit for me. So that's a small but really important thing. So I do that literally every time I arrive at my desk and I've got uh -huh. a, a little candle in all of those places. 
Um, I, I've got horses, so you might see. Yeah, I can horses. see the horses. I know you love horses. I can see the horses. And um, I incorporate them into my work when I can with clients. Yeah. Um, but but aside from working with them every evening, I have somebody help me in the morning, but in the evenings, I do the the mucking out, the feeding, and the mm -hmm. being with them in the evenings, and they keep me really attentive to the present. Mm -hmm. um so i'll i'm up with the horses at six in the morning feeding them and just those kind of 10 minutes there's something about being in nature for a few minutes every morning mm -hmm. and then again in the evening so it kind of bookends my day times them um and then then the the other things are your classic things that what's most important today I try and not get myself in a whirlwind because I'm an action taking kind of person and sometimes yeah. I can create chaos for myself yes but if I haven't yes. decided what's the one really important thing of the day that I want to do well and for me this is it for today this is my most important conversation today oh that's amazing um, so just been super clear around if I do nothing else what's the one thing I want to do do justice so that's Thank a pleasure hopefully Thank you so much. Um, I love that, Tess. I love um, how you sort of ground yourself in your workspace and what's important to you, who's with you. And um, I love the the focus on on, on the horses. I, lo I love horses. I always wanted a pony when I was a child. And, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and sort of, you know, and and the, the I think the most important thing is that you said is that what's important today, what, you know, what is important today? What am I going to focus on today and what and what's important? Important. and I think in all of those things it, it helps you to center doesn't it it helps you to yeah. sort of like think okay who we are what we're going to do today and uh, this is a good thing in my life these these are the memories I have and these are the important people in my life I love that I really really love that and moving on from that so I'm a nurse I'm, I'm very um, focused on the health and well-being of everyone and yeah. um, since being a business owner i'm fascinated with the health and being well-being of entrepreneurs i have a hypothesis that we're quite driven people um you've talked about being an action taker so you know how do you manage your health and well-being as a as a business owner because it can get quite tough and i think um, you haven't got the support of when you're in an organisation of like um, occupational health or yeah. you know, you know be able to take paid sick days and things like that. So how yeah. do you manage it? Um, oh, there's so much there, Dawn, if I'm honest. Um, bearing in mind I've been doing it for 12 years and I've had a lot yeah. of hurdles and bumps along the yeah. way where I've done yeah. well and I've really done it badly. <laughs> yes, yeah, um, I hear you. The learning is, is as much from when I've done it badly. And, and for me, one of the biggest learnings there was I went through a period of probably three years where I was traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, that was internationally. Mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't about... Um, and my, my husband would say, you know, over the weekend, watch the next video if you like. It wasn't a, am I going? It was, where am I going? Yeah. Every week I was away. So I really managed that. Well, not very well at all. And, and it had an impact on me. So I became very tired. And then I, when I'm tired, I don't eat well. And so mm. then that cycle yes. begins. And then you take a moment to pause, reprioritize, look at travel agenda. So that was a really big learning for me. I'd, I got caught up in that, oh, it's really exciting, Brussels, US, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't creating the spaces in between. And I think that's where, you know, full circle, where I am today, neither of these have opened up. And we spoke mm -hmm. briefly when we first had a chat this morning. Um, now travel's happening again, but now I'm much more alert to the spaces in between the travel. Yeah. Um, and that's as relevant for, you know, going into London as it is flying somewhere yes. else. Not yes. going into London every day in the same week. Yes. You know, create a breathing space. So so that's a big part of it. Um, the, the book ending of my day with the horses is another thing mm -hmm. that I've learned really helps me because... Uh, that just takes the busyness out of my brain mm -hmm. because you as I say there are great teachers of being present because the busyness for me wasn't just about the doing it was this that was happening and I think that really helps mm -hmm. um, anyone's well-being um, and, and so we you know we know from loads of research and you will absolutely be dialed into this some conditions they actually recommend time with animals and horses in particular yes definitely it brings definitely. the whole rhythm 
It does. Um, and levels of anxiety or busyness, you know, down into yeah. places of coping. So um, apart from that, um, I'm definitely one for the accountability she's gathered. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not working with a personal um, trainer at the moment um, because I have a nigger on my back, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, but when I get the other side of that, I will pick up with her again and mm -hmm. I have her coming to me rather than another travel thing I have to go somewhere else yeah, yeah. to, yeah, to yeah. take care of that so I'm, I'm trying to have life being integrated rather than me go to lots of different places yeah so that really, yeah that's a sample yeah that really makes a lot of sense I really like what you said about thinking about the impact of traveling or even the impact of not traveling yes isn't it? so you know when I was when I was still working full-time I traveled all over the southeast and um um for you who don't know there's a massive motorway and um, freeway in, in in the southeast of England called the M25 and that was my sort of nemesis I hated it and sitting on the M25 and I think um there is a there is an underestimation of the impact that traveling has on has on you and i think um i really like what you said about being aware of the impact of traveling and also in addition to that being aware of the of the of, of not traveling if you're working at home because um there is some research that the actual commute time gives you time to center on yourself and some yeah. time and you have to factor that in and um, because that's quite important time so as well as being so i used to make use of the time by listening to podcasts or just thinking and strategizing yeah. Yeah. but i don't have that time anymore because i don't actually leave the house to go home but i really like what you said about bookending the day either with exercise or with animals or something like that i think that's a really really good tip i really like that so tess it's been so great to um have you on the show how can people get hold of you if they want to work with you obviously and we'll put a link to the book in the um in the show notes um so how can people get hold of you and um you know get contact you and hear more about your work yeah, so uh, in terms of um, the media, the main, the primary platform for me is LinkedIn. Because uh -huh. um, all my work is in organisations, so no working individuals, teams, and then the whole system, as I mentioned. So yeah, to, to contact, link up with me there and, and send me a DM, delighted to have conversation with um, whatever is percolating off the back of this conversation. I, I have got my personal profile on Facebook, test.coop. Um, I don't tend to use Instagram and TikTok. I mean, that's just the end yeah. of it. Yeah. I, I, I sit behind that. I haven't got time, but it could just be. I haven't figured out how to make the best of it if I'm being yeah. honest. And that's but okay. Then... <laughs> yeah, that is all right. That's fine. Yeah. 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 So LinkedIn will probably be the, the primary and, and um, my website, um, thetransformationagency.com, um, would be another reference point if people want to um, do a little bit of research. But yeah, delighted. I mean, one of the things that I've learned um, and I'm sure you can absolutely resonate with this, Don. I've learned um, in moving into being a business owner is um, be open to conversations. And, you know, conversations don't need to be heavy lifting. We can just have a nice conversation. What's happening for you? What's happening for me? We might be able to help each other. But, you know, it's a great conversation regardless. And that's how I hold myself when I'm networking. Um, let's just have some great conversation and I find that really resources me to be me rather than oh I need to network um, yes I need to be in the space of networking but how I show up I'm going to have great conversations that's wonderful thank you so much Tess um, and you ended with a lovely tip I usually ask people to end with a tip or nugget to share with the audience and you've done that beautifully thank you so much for it's being here it's an absolutely pleasure to be here and uh, to be with you today so that's it for the Dawn Jarvis show today I hope you've enjoyed it if you did like share subscribe and I will see you soon take care bye bye